Hey guys! So this video is a request from Scorpio Daydreams on Instagram who messaged me like two months ago if I would do a video talking about same face syndrome and style, what's the difference between the two, what's the weird ambiguity, ambiguity between the two and all that stuff. And it's been a really difficult thing for me to think about, but I feel like I've come up with a good discussion and why this topic is so ambiguous and why it's so difficult and all that kind of stuff. But I do have to say before I start getting into it, disclaimer, I do use examples of popular artists that you guys might know really, really well, and it's not to criticize them or to start a war or anything like that. It really, really isn't, but it might come across that way if you don't finish the video. I do make a point about their artwork at the end of the video. All I'm asking is don't like start immediately messaging these artists and being like, Bianca hates your work, she's a horrible person, and she criticized your blah blah blah, and you know, it starts a whole like internet thing, I'm not trying to do that. But I had to use them as, as examples because I know them so well, and, and they kind of feed into my larger point, which you will get to if you stick around for the entire video. So, with that being said, let's get going right now. Okay, so, style versus same face syndrome, a dilemma. So we have to define some things first before we really get into the nitty-gritty of this conversation. Style, there's a lot of different definitions. The difference between your skill and perfection, deliberate design choices, or just basically what makes your art yours. You know, what is your artistic fingerprint? How can people identify your art as your own? Whereas same face syndrome is kind of a small part of style and it's significantly more negative. This definition is basically making the same face for every kind of character, regardless of their age, gender, or ethnicity, and just flat out being unable to create different faces with an established style. And by that I mean, you might be able to technically draw an old lady and a small baby, but it's uncomfortable for you, and those characters look wildly outside of your style, like they don't fit in at all, because you don't do that kind of stuff often. So those are our two definitions, and if you're someone who is kind of worried that you might have same face syndrome, I would encourage you guys to look at my video, How to Defeat Same Face Syndrome. I'm going to warn you guys, it is a poorly edited video. <laughs> it is really, really, really cringy to watch, but if that's the information you're looking for, you're not going to find it here, you're going to find it there. I'll leave a link in the description for you guys. So we know what same face syndrome is, we know what style is, let's take a look at an example of someone who has a strong sense of style and even a preference towards one kind of style, but has a really, really broad range, and that person would be James Jean. I love his art so much, guys. He has a tendency in his art to draw like these really smooth, ethereal, humanoid type of females, I guess. I don't really know what to call it, but they don't, you can't like pin an ethnicity, you can't really pin an age to these characters. There's just something kind of weird about them. That's not a bad thing, but they're just kind of, I guess, smooth. That's like the best word I can use to describe his work. But at the same time, I mean, he's really, really good at realism. He's done these really fucking amazing portraits that totally break the mold of the art that we just saw. You can easily pinpoint ethnicity, age, different kind of features. I mean, these three people don't look anything at all like each other. And he flip-flops between a lot of different styles all the time. He goes back and forth between this kind of realistic style and this more simplistic-ish sort of style. I hate to say simplistic because there's a lot of lot going on with like shading and things, but you guys get what I'm going with here. However, a lot of artists, I would argue maybe 80 to 90 percent of the artists out in there are not very simple to pin down. James Jean is an easy, cut, dry, look at this, an artist who does not have same vein syndrome. And I could just end the video right now and be like, go be like James Jean. But we all know that there's a lot more to this issue. In fact, there's so much more that it blends into the animation industry. Like the Disney dilemma. I think we all remember, <laughs> or at least know, of this uh, major argument going on right now with Disney and it's been going on for the past few years, where the female characters all look the same. They all have very similar features, very similar face shapes, and the males are very diverse and unique and have a lot more going on for them. What the hell is up with that? I mean, look at this. Do we all remember when Frozen came out back in, like, what, 2013, 14? I forget. When this movie came out, like, people smashed it because 
The mom, Elsa, and Anna, like three really huge characters, were so identical to one another that you could literally do this. This is not a lot of digital editing, guys. This is literally just <sighs> cutting and pasting the same fucking face on top of one another. So we have an issue here. Disney, for some reason, really, really likes drawing or making the same type of female face and their men are different. I've seen a lot of arguments about Disney versus Studio Ghibli, whether or not they both have same face syndrome, which one's better, blah, blah, blah. And frankly, Studio Ghibli definitely has kind of a same face syndrome kind of look. They're all very, very similar. They're all very simple. But at least you can say that it's consistent across males and females, whereas with Disney, as we just saw, it's really only females that get that treatment. And I would argue that if you're going to have same face syndrome, at least keep it across the board consistent. That way you're not polarizing a certain group. I'm not saying at all in this video that I commend Disney for only making the same kind of faces in their females, but I do have to defend them. I'm not an animator, but I can recognize that Disney cranks out the movies. They, what, put out Frozen and Tangled within two, three years of each other? I mean, that's kind of insane. They're trying to make a lot of money, and at some point, you do have to cut corners. They only have so big of a budget. They're going to have to recycle frames. They're going to have to reuse the same kind of 3D animated parts. I don't know what to call it, but I think animators know what I'm talking about. Basically, they, they have to cut corners somewhere, but I really, really don't think that that's the only reason why Disney is doing this kind of thing. I don't think that budget concerns and work and deadlines are the only reason that these girls are all drawn the same way, especially when you look at the males. The males are all different. So what do we say about Disney? Is it same face syndrome? Is it laziness? Is it just a preference for drawing these girls these way? What's really going on? We have this issue a lot. It's not just animation, it's with 2D illustrators as well. Hey, psst, you, right there. Um, remember in the beginning of the video when I said I'm not trying to critique these artists? Let me remind you and let me just state, I love these artists so fucking much. I love them to death. This is not me trying to criticize them. This is me trying to use them as a major part of the point that I make at the end of this video, which I'm going to get back to right now. So let's step out of animation for a second and talk about illustrators that are really, really big right now. So we have this artist, Audra Eau Claire. I love her. Guys, she's really, really cool. If you don't know her artwork, you should definitely check it out. I love her painting style. I love her, like, lines and the way she draws faces. But, I mean, let's take a look at these faces, guys. She does have a very similar kind of face that she does fairly often. Bramini says, really great illustrator. I love her stuff. She's... She does the cutest things, nicest personality, and her stuff is really great, but she even admits, like in one of her most recent YouTube videos, she even admits she wants to push herself and draw more men and more old people because she knows she doesn't do that very often. Her stuff is very simple and very cute, and her female characters tend to look a lot alike. And then we have Loish. If you don't know Loish, you need to know Loish. Um, <laughs> really, really amazing, prolific digital artist. But anyway, she's got this really amazing digital style, but she tends to do the same sort of face. The thing is, though, she has the capability of doing different kind of faces. I mean, these are only two examples. I could show a lot more, but in the past and in the recent past, she's done people of different ethnicities, done different ages, done ma males, females. She's done a lot of different stuff. It's just that she has a tendency to do art like this. Why is that? If this artist, Loish, has the capability of doing different kinds of characters within a, a same style, aka she does not, by our definition, has same face syndrome, what's going on? I mean, is this just a style? It's preference, artistic preference. But get this, guys, it's not just happening in 2016, it's been happening all throughout mother fucking artistic history. All throughout history, we have seen artists stepping out and doing their own kind of style, their own characters that they just kind of gravitate to over and over again because that's what they like, that's what their aesthetic is. Pretty much since artists had the freedom to, uh, not be strictly into like realism. Once artists were kind of given the freedom to do whatever they wanted, they took that by storm and they started to do their own thing. And we can see that what Alphonse Mucha was, I think, 
I think he was like early 1800s if I'm not mistaken. So guys, that's like 200 years of art that we have here where people are just kind of choosing to do their own thing even if it does look a little similar to one another. That's totally fine. But I'm going to continue to argue <laughs> that it's not just artists wanting to draw the same thing over and over again. There is still more to this discussion and it has to do with money. So, Jaw Cooper, an artist that I really, really, really love, she said in one of her interviews back in her early days of gallery work, she started to notice that whenever she made a painting of a naked girl with a tiger, it sold. I mean, like, that was a big, big hit for her. So for a short period of her, t of her artistic career, she did more tiger and naked lady drawings, <laughs> or paintings, whatever. She did more of that stuff because supply and demand. You obviously want to make more money, you are an artist. So that was a thing that was going on in her life. Similarly, Audra Eau Claire, she said in one YouTube video that even though she really likes doing black and white artwork, she tends to only make art in color because that's what sells more on her website. So are you starting to pick up on something? There is a supply and demand issue going on here. And back to Lois, she's been doing more different body types. She's been really kind of pushing herself to not do the crazy overdone skinny girl pear shape. She's doing the body types that no one is really creating and she's kind of making them really unique and cool. However, very recently, like what, two weeks ago, one week ago, something like that, there was some serious internet hate going on because someone not only stole her artwork, which is a huge fucking event in my book, they stole her artwork, but they used her artwork to actually demean the body that she was trying to praise in her artwork. <laughs> and I realized in the past, what, three examples, I didn't, these are not specific to face, you know, Jaw Cooper and the Tigers, Audra Claire with doing black and white, Lois doing different body types. I mean, yes, technically that is not, we're not talking about faces, but it's along the same vein. This is their style, this is the artwork that they're producing, and there's this conglomeration of money and viewers and how they react to what they're creating. So I'm going to make the argument that we are missing a piece of vocabulary in this discourse. We're, we're not talking about style so much. I mean, it's in the realm of style, but we know that it's a little bit different. And it's not really same face syndrome because there are all these artists, like, for example, Disney, Lowish, who have proven themselves time and time again that they have the capability of doing different kinds of characters, different ages, ethnicities, etc. And that's really great, but they have a very strong preference towards doing this one thing. And it's not quite style, it's not quite same face syndrome. So what are we talking about here? What's going on? And I'm going to make the argument that there is a word that we are missing, and I'm going to invent that word right now, and it is commercial style. Commercial style is a word I just fucking invented <laughs> for this video. Someone I hope down the line will make a better word for it. But for right now, I'm going to say that commercial style is when an artist makes a certain style or tends to shift their style towards one more narrow kind of look because they want it to sell. They want to make money and have a living and their art is their brand and they are trying to be successful with their audience. So the three artists that I was talking about before, Fran Menezes, Loish, and Audra Eau Claire, they all have like more or less their own brands. Especially in the 21st century, like right now, 2010s, artists are really having to become their own kind of company, their own brands. They have to market themselves, they have to have the stores online. By the way guys, if you are in the holiday spirit and you really need a last minute Christmas gift, all three of these people have really, really amazing online stores. Fran Manisa is on Etsy, Loish on Society6, and Audra Claire on Store Envy. I'll put links in the description for you guys to make it easy. They have really great stuff. I would encourage you guys to check it out. But in any case, all three of these artists and many, many, many more are having to deal with the fact that they are a business and they have to respond to supply and demand. And guess what, guys? We, the audience, are the demand. Commercial style includes you. Believe it or not, guys, we are 50% of the reason why artists make the art that they do. Because artists do not create art in a vacuum. 
There really are not that many artists out there who just make a pretty piece of artwork, look at it for 10 seconds, are happy with it, and then they shove it in the closet. That's not how it works. Art needs to have an audience, a viewer, at least one person, right? And for a lot of us, we're trying to make it our own lifestyle, so we need to be able to have it to sell. We need it to sustain us. Yeah, you can have it as a hobby, but, you know, let's be honest, guys. Wouldn't it be great if we made money from our art? That'd be awesome. Artists, whether intentionally or not, are changing themselves because they know what's going to be a hit and what's not going to be a hit. It's really, really, really easy for us to kind of, you know, criticize our favorite artists and be like, they have same face syndrome because they only do 20-something-year-old white girls of the same kind of face, blah, blah, blah. But let's be honest, guys. We are part of the reason why they are making that kind of art. It is a lot more to do with us as an audience than it is just them as an artist. I mean, absolutely, it'd be great if these artists would do a little bit more diverse stuff, but they have to make a living, you know, and they have to keep up the popularity and stay on top of the game. So my last kind of point in this thing, which is really long, is to basically show you guys an example of an artist uh, who I really, really admire, who has a very strong style, but most definitely does not have same face syndrome, has a crazy wide uh, repertoire of characters or cast of characters and is crazy as successful and is able to create as many characters as they want because it's all good and that is the animator Shomei. I have mentioned his artwork in quite a few of my videos <laughs> because I love him so fucking much. I love his artwork because every single fucking character even if they're background characters they all look completely different completely unique it is all 100% under the same umbrella of art style, but it's it's all very just, it's all unique and beautiful and really well done. You don't have to like his style, by the way, but I think he's a really great example of someone who's had major success being able to do a really wide range of characters. I mean, take a look at this screen. Every single character in this shot looks completely different. The two men in the foreground have the same expression, but they don't look anything alike. And they don't look at all like the main character who's holding the stool right behind them. And the main character doesn't look anything at all like the band players going on in the background. There's a lot going on, but across all movies, he is able to do it. And I'm not trying to say that, like, all of us should be like Shomei. Because back to that whole idea of stylistic preference, some people just genuinely are not really all that interested in drawing, like, this huge range of characters, you know? They're totally happy just drawing the same type of person, the same type of ethnicity, the same type of all that stuff. I'm not going to sit up here and act like that's the best thing in the world, but that's fine. If that's your preference, if that's your aesthetic, go for it. Do it. All I'm saying is there is a way to conquer this sort of issue. There is a way to have a really strong style, not have same face syndrome, and kind of, I guess, defeat the commercial style that I was talking about in this video. So yeah, guys, that is my big point in this. You, you are more a part of the artistic process than you might be giving yourself credit for. And a big part of the reason why this is so difficult to talk about is there are so many things going on behind the scenes that we don't really look at and take notice of. And we're not considering ourselves as part of the process as well, even though we are maybe about 50% of the process. So there's a lot of things to think about. And I totally get that I probably got a lot of things wrong in this video. I might have said something wrong, I might have said something a little offensive, I might have said something that I, I might not have just touched upon as many things as I should have. I realize that this video is flawed. All I'm asking is, if I said something totally, totally out of line, you can tell me. But I mean, tell me respectfully. I don't want, like, like I'm, I'm really worried that this video is going to put a giant target on my back because I might offend some people, I might start a really horrible like comment chain disaster like i'm really hoping that that doesn't happen but it might so please guys i try my best with this if it is too problematic i will take it down but this is the best that i've got and if you have your own comments to make i would appreciate it if you'd be respectful in the comment section because this is one of those topics where it could be it's really easy to criticize other people and I, I don't want you guys to kind of like fuel a fire of hate um, 
and start criticizing a whole bunch of artists that I didn't even mention and it turns into this giant like evil war. That's not what I'm trying to do at all. I love the artists that I talked about in this video and you know it's it's just a tricky subject so please guys be respectful and that would be great. If you want to check out the artists that I talked about in the video they have online stores I have links in the description because holidays and it would be really great if you could support these artists during the holiday season. They get you know a huge bang during this time of the year in sales and it'd be really great if you could support them even more. Speaking of supporting artists If you liked this video, if it gave you something to think about, if now the topic is on your mind, please give this video a like so that other people can see it. And if you really like my videos, please subscribe. Also, if you want to check me out on Instagram, Snapchat, and Tumblr, it is Bofa for all of them and I have links in the description. So that's kind of it. I am super, super tired now. <laughs> I hope this video is good enough. And yeah, I hope you guys are having a great day, a great holiday season, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys!